Welcome to a new vlog. Today we are taking a look at a very interesting item that was sent in by a viewer of the channel. Fabian, who is from Romania, sent me this uh, microamp uh, current source that he designed and built himself. Even though he built only a few units by hand, it looks very professional and uh, you must have noticed the uh, resemblance with the uh, microcurrent built by Dave from EEV blog. But that gadget is used to measure small currents, while this one is used to generate small currents. Fabian told me he designed and built this unit to help him uh, characterize some voltage references and it has uh, uh, three ranges as uh, shown here on the front panel. It can do 1000 microamps, 100 microamps and 10 microamps. We also have a uh, second switch here with three position. It's off, on and uh, ba on plus battery check. And if we switch it to the battery check, we get an LED uh, constantly on if the battery is okay. Although the original idea wasn't to sell these units, but only to make something he needed in the lab, he realized the costs for making something like this are quite high. So he has these uh, listed on Tindy to recover some of the money he invested into making them. And you will find a link in the description below to his uh, Tindy shop. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, a professional manufacturer of printed circuit boards. Their website is modern and has convenient features like easy to use order form with built-in Gerber viewer, production process tracking, package tracking and single button reorder for previous orders without having to upload Gerber files again. It obviously is pretty useful to have a precision current source in the lab. You can use it to accurately measure resistors. For example, you apply a known precise 1 milliamp current through a resistor and you measure the voltage drop on the resistor with a multimeter and you get a much more accurate result than measuring the resistance directly. You could also use it to check multimeter accuracy on the low current ranges and that should be pretty handy for me as I regularly review multimeters here on the channel. Although Fabian uh, specifies these as plus or minus 0.15% uh, uh, accuracy, he told me that he checks them individually and they usually fall within 0.03%, which is a pretty good spec if you ask me. The project doesn't appear to be open source, Fabian didn't mention that while we were discussing, but I will open it up and uh, see if we can identify some of the ICs used inside. Another interesting fact is that Fabian ages these by keeping them on for about two months continuously, as that will improve the stability of the voltage reference used inside. So uh, let's take it apart and see how it looks inside. It looks like we only have to take off these four screws. It's a pretty snug fit, so I'm gonna use this uh, cable to try and get it out and I must say it looks really really clean inside really nice construction actually I'm impressed with the build quality considering he only built a few of these I'm not a hundred percent sure on the PCB but uh, the panel looks different to what I'm used to seeing from China in color and, and quality maybe he had them made somewhere else I don't know exactly, but they just uh, look different from the PCBs I'm, uh, I'm getting. We immediately spot the um, two CR2032 battery sockets and the two 4mm uh, banana terminals. And these look like uh, good quality connectors. They are not the uh, cheap stuff from China. And just look how nice they are uh, soldered to the PCB using these uh, leads really nice good quality soldering i'm seeing a few uh, zero ohm jumpers spread around this uh, pcb and the reason for those is to clean is to keep the uh, front panel clean of vias as you can see there are no tracks or vias on the front panel so uh, fabian used those uh, zero ohm leads as jumpers on the pcb to uh, move the traces around so even though this is a double-sided PCB, the layout is, uh, the placement is all single-sided and the layout as well. So I have identified uh, some of the parts uh, used in here. And uh, these two ICs are uh, MAX4544 precision analog switches. 
those might be switching uh, some resistors for the different ranges next to the uh, output terminals we have our uh, voltage reference and this is a microchip MCP1501 which has a typical 10 ppm per degree C temp coefficient next to it we have uh, an MC33171 which is a low power op amp I don't think there's anything special about this op amp the um, output of the voltage reference uh, goes through these uh, two trimmers and I think Fabian uses these to uh, trim the reference and calibrate it and then, it, then it probably goes uh, through the path of uh, these um, analog uh, switches before it goes back to this op amp which is probably just a buffer for the output these two SOT235 devices are uh, microchip MCP6V810Drift op-amps. These are uh, pretty good uh, op-amps and um, I couldn't identify this chip uh, right next to the uh, LED but I'm assuming that's some sort of uh, comparator uh, that checks the uh, voltage on the battery and uh, turns on or off that LED. There is an interesting uh, selection of capacitors on this board. We have uh, ceramic capacitors, we have tantalum capacitors and uh, surface mount electrolytic um, uh, capacitors. I'm not sure why Fabian um, used three types of capacitors on this circuit, but maybe he'll uh, comment below to let us know. And I know some of you might be tempted to think there isn't a lot of uh, parts inside this thing. And while the total part count might not be uh, high, they are specifically chosen for their characteristics and I'm sure it would have taken Fabian a few revisions of this circuit to get to the desired specs. Now let's uh, put this thing uh, back together and uh, connect it to my Agilent 34401 multimeter to check the uh, values. My meter hasn't been um, calibrated since it was new so it isn't uh, exactly um, metrology kind test of test conditions but um, good meters like this uh, Agilent that I have uh, shouldn't drift much over the years and it has been uh, kept in good conditions it has only be has a few hours of usage and it's been kept uh, in the lab all of its life so I'm pretty confident in the in the measurements it's showing on its uh, lowest current range which is uh, 10 milliamp this meter has a specified accuracy of 0.01%. That would be plus or minus 1 microamps. The uh, microcurrent source uh, should do better than that, so any deviation measured here should be caused by the meter and uh, my test setup, not by, by the uh, current source itself. I think Fa Fabian mentioned he uh, calibrates these at 20 degrees uh, Celsius. Right now I have 28 in the lab so we are a bit off in terms of temperature but we are still getting some uh, decent results on the meter and we are within the accuracy of the meter. On the 10 micrograms uh, range I don't have enough resolution on this meter to get a uh, very accurate and uh, stable reading but the results are pretty close. Also uh, the cables I'm using here are pretty low quality um, connectors uh, so these uh, are not ideal um, conditions for measuring uh, this kind of low currents I should be using some um, better quality gold plated uh, banana connectors for this test and uh, ideally you would want to connect this with a shielded cable coaxial cable be between the device under test and the uh, meter but I don't have any of those so I'm just using what I have available in the lab. Let's also check the 100 microamp range. And the 1000 microamp range. I think these are some pretty good uh, measurements considering that uh, my Agilent meter has not been uh, calibrated uh, since it was new. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I am certainly happy to have received one of these uh, microcurrent supplies. It should be useful in the lab 
and uh, you will see me use it in uh, future videos to test multimeters on the low current ranges and I also plan to get some um, shielded uh, coax cable and uh, redo these uh, measurements to see if uh, maybe I will g be getting uh, some more stable readings I'm uh, referring to the last digit uh, I'm going to do a comparison to see the difference between testing with just some simple um, banana jack cable versus uh, coaxial cable to see if there is any difference in the measurement. I'm expecting to get a more stable reading. I have ordered uh, one of those cables and it's on its way so that video should be coming soon. If you're interested in one of these uh, microcurrent sources uh, there will be a link in the description to the Tindy page where Fabian sells this. As usual, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you next week.